Hello everyone, this is Joshua Smith of Apollo's Artifacts. My goodness, do I have a bunch of crazy news for you today. Join me as our world descends into complete and total madness. I begin here with an article from The Sun. Ticking time bomb, how disease X could wipe out 75 million people. This is sort of a follow-up to a report that I did earlier where I showed you some 89 people have died of a mystery disease in Africa. And this is a chart that tracks many other diseases that are currently going on around the world right now. And I move from that to an article in the Indian Journal of Medical Research. One Health, Disease X, and the Challenge of Unknown Unknowns. And in light of COVID-19, they've begun to do additional research into the some 1.67 million unknown viruses that exist in the world, of which between 631,000 to 827,000 of those can infect human beings. And the real danger here being identified as disease X is an ominous category they call it of currently unknown pathogens. These pathogens could become a threat to the entire world and far more deadly than COVID. And there have been a series of reports out this week showing that population growth in the United States is on the decline. Fertility rates are plummeting. And when you see how many manipulators are in charge and how they all happen to be for population control, this isn't a shock. Here's an article from The Week called America is looking down the barrel of a population collapse. However, the uh, underlining aspect here is wrong. It says the American economy is bitterly hostile to families. That's actually not true. What is bitterly hostile to families are the leftist professors in universities across the United States and the elite, such as Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. And uh, what they have done is they've created entire generations who don't want to have children because it's bad for the earth, they believe. They believe that Mother Earth should be worshipped and that children are a problem for that. Uh, the fellow who writes this article doesn't seem to make the connection at all between COVID and the decline in births. Who would want to bring children into a world where everything is on lockdown, where everything is shut down, where you have to wear a mask everywhere, where you have to have vaccines to go anywhere, where you even have elites saying that people shouldn't be allowed into grocery stores without a vaccine, meaning they just rather you starve to death unless you have a vaccine for a disease that has a 1.62% case fatality rate in the United States. And here's an article from ABC News by way of the Associated Press. U.S. population growth at lowest rate in pandemic's first year. U.S. population growth dipped to its lowest rate since the nation's founding during the first year of the pandemic. And how could anyone possibly be surprised by that? But this is exactly what the goal has been if you look at this thing from the lens of a pandemic. And notice how they put complete lies over on the sidebar over here. I get angry. Hospital workers left frustrated by the unvaccinated. But of course, that isn't true because we know that most of the people who are catching COVID right now are, are actually the fully vaccinated. Numerous evidences of that that I'll show in a second video that will not be on YouTube. It'll be over on Rumble and Brideon and BitChute because YouTube does not allow you to tell the truth here about certain subjects that they very closely guard. And from there I move to an article from Zero Hedge. Pentagon cracks down on quote extremism within U.S. military. And uh, what they point out here is that the standards for what they consider to be extremist activity are going to be massively low to where even if you click like or repost something on Facebook or Twitter that has something to do with a Gadsden flag or don't tread on me or something like that, they'll basically be prepared to throw you out of the military. And uh, what this is doing is it's purging the various branches of the military to get out anyone who will not bow down. So all that you're going to have left in a few years are just those who bend the knee at anything. They'll do anything that they're ordered to do. Um, up to and even including, I'm sure, shooting fellow Americans. And if you say, oh, no, no way, that can't happen here. Remember, years ago during Hurricane Katrina, they already went into the high and dry areas and confiscated weapons from people who were having those in their homes just to protect themselves. That includes New Orleans, where today authorities stepped up their efforts to empty the city. Bob Woodruff is there again tonight with an extraordinary human drama unfolding. Bob? That's true, Elizabeth, and good evening from New Orleans here. The police and the National Guard find themselves in a very difficult position tonight to try to carry out an order to force people from the city without actually using force. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police department, everyone home! 
Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure, too, that uh, whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave. We need to make note, call it in. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. You said guns, guns will be taken. Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. This guard unit occupied a church, using it as a base camp. They had to leave a note because they could not get hold of the pastor to get permission. It is, it is surreal. Yeah, you just never, you never expect to do this in your own country. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. If somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. And so there you have it. So don't you ever tell me that they would not shoot a fellow American. You heard that guy say that all the way back during Katrina. Can you imagine what the idiot thugs would do now? after the military has been purged and has nothing in there but left-wing vaccine-worshipping morons, of course they'll plug you in the head. Here's another article about the same thing from the Gateway Pundit. The purge continues. Pentagon issues guidelines to crack down on domestic and patriotic extremism within the military ranks. Simply liking or reposting certain views can trigger discipline. See, so now they're going to get rid of all patriots. Anyone who actually loves America, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, so on and so forth, you're going to be gone. And they're going to have nothing in there but lickspittle power worshippers. You're going to have a bunch of General Millies running around hating America and loving China. And as it points out here, further down in the article, almost anything can qualify as extremism in the view of Pentagon officials thanks to their all-encompassing definitions of extremism extremism, even giving the okay hand gesture. So no more playing the circle game where you do a circle and if someone looks at it, you punch them in the arm once. That's gone. That's white supremacism now. And uh, exactly what kind of military is this that's doing this and uh, what is their goal in order to uh, build the woke army of the future? Well, you're seeing a picture of it right here. This is who you're Four-star generals are going to be, they're going to be ordering everybody around, and the lickspittle morons will just follow whatever these dudes say. The headline is, U.S. Air Force focused on wokeness while Russia and China make threats against the country. And of course, these people don't care. They would gladly have China come in and just take over everything. Then they would follow Xi Jinping's orders and then order everyone else below them to worship him. And you can see here where the all-powerful Air Force is now lecturing everyone to figure out what these uh, pronouns should be. And that's going to be your future. That's going to be the order of the day right there. This is what you're going to be following when you're in the military. Here I have an article from the Christian Post. Swedish startup's COVID-19 microchipped implant leads to mark of the beast speculation. And uh, here you see a moron taking a chip into his hand so that everything about him can be tracked and traced. And then even worse than this would be the Neuralink brain implants, which will begin in 2022. Next, I have another article from the Gateway Pundit. Austrian government hires vaccination hunters to track down those inhabitants who have not had their Fauci vaccines. And how much easier will this be once they get those microchips put into your hands or the Neuralink into your head? Then maybe they just take away your free will altogether and you'll just walk around and take the shots and do whatever it is they want you to do all the time. And if you refuse to be vaccinated in Austria, you're going to face huge fines. Many places actually throw you into prison if you violate their vaccine standards. And in Australia, they got a handy dandy little concentration camp that they'll throw you in. And over here on Zero Hedge, they have a link to a report that Tucker Carlson did about all of the pedos over at CNN, which I reported on recently. We're sad to tell you there's something very strange going on at CNN right now. In just the past week or two, two separate CNN producers have been accused of child molestation. One of them was a man called John Griffin. He was just indicted by a federal grand jury for attempting to, quote, induce minors to engage in unlawful sexual activity. We're not going to get into details, 
They're horrifying. He's been fired. Griffin used to work for Chris Cuomo. He bragged about working shoulder to shoulder with him. We'll leave it there. Then just days after that story, Project Veritas exposed another creep at CNN. They published graphic text messages in a video of a CNN producer, apparently CNN producer, fantasizing about molesting a child. Project Veritas said the producer also illicitly, allegedly sought explicit photographs of that child. So we called over to CNN to ask, is this one of your employees? We have the name, we're not gonna air it because none of this has gone to trial, but does he still work there? They didn't get back to us. But this seems like a real story. So to put it into context, as of today, there are more accused pedophiles at CNN than Americans who have died of the so-called Omicron variant that's supposed to be so deadly. Now that seems like news to us. You'd think CNN would be covering it. Like what the hell? How many companies can say that? But that's not what they're covering. If you were watching the Unix show over the weekend, you learned that it's actually Fox News that suffered a week of quote, embarrassing headlines. <laughs> Paging Dr. Freud. We point up lots of examples of transference. That's when you take the things, the sins you've committed and accuse others of them. Nothing better than this example, ever. And remember that the eunuch works, of course, for the Dwarf King and the Dwarf King works ultimately for AT&T. AT&T is responsible for the trash that you see on CNN. And in a story that's uh, similar to the one that I told you before about California schools where they're dropping the grades of D and F because they're trying to cover up certain disparities that exist in reality, Ontario schools will no longer require teachers to pass math proficiency tests due to racial disparities. And this goes right along with so many of the universities that are also doing away with ACT and SAT scores for entry requirements. Basically, they're all going towards just no standards whatsoever to get in other than whatever your skin color happens to be. Over at Zero Hedge, we have this, USC under fire over students' anti-Zionist threats on social media. And this is where a student has tweeted out that they want to kill all MFing Zionists and has posted a slew of anti-Semitic slurs all over their Twitter account, but of course no one cares. It doesn't matter because they're not the right groups being offended. And of course the SPLC and ADL have nothing to say about this, but they are obsessed with so-called white supremacists. Here we delve into even further insanity from the Daily Mail. She'll never leave him. Woman who married a tree to save its life and changed her surname to Elder says they're still going strong and will spend their third Christmas together. And this is sort of typical of the uh, leftist insanity that you see from so many white professors across America. They're all nuts like this. Dirt worshippers, tree huggers, completely crazy. And when I say someone is as crazy as the day is long, this is what I mean. Uh, speaking of crazy and a dirtbag liar, here we see Jim Cramer who is triple vaxxed and also still pe tested positive for COVID because the vaccines work so well. And this is the clown who said that we are in the greatest economy of all time. And next, from King World News, the world has now entered the first of four major phases of chaos and financial destruction. And uh, basically we're on a uh, one-way downward slope. There's basically nothing that can fix the mess that we are in and what we're headed toward. Uh, contrary, of course, to what Jim Cramer said, we are not in the greatest economy of all time. We are right on the precipice of complete total disaster. And this is a rather lengthy and in-depth article. I'll have it linked below so that you can read it yourself. But it shows here how things, of course, all began with the COVID disaster, with the ongoing shutdowns. We have people losing their jobs all over the place. Now the vaccines are causing even more people to lose their jobs. Then you have to deal with the global debt crisis, which is not just national debts, but it's also personal debts as well, which are all hitting astronomical record levels. Here's a visual for you here so that you can see how bad global debt has gotten. Uh, then for part three here, we have the derivatives crisis, which is so bad that I don't even want to talk about it. It is a uh, trust me, it is beyond horrendous and you really don't even want to know the details of this one. This, there is a visual here that gives you some uh, idea of what you're staring at in terms of the derivatives crisis. And then part four is that we're basically a ticking time bomb, not just for disease X, as I started this off with, but also financially. And it says, as we look into the next five to 10 years, I'm painting a picture of what could happen to the financial system. The risk the world is facing is horrifying. And I uh, completely agree with that. 
Next, in uh, Hollywood news here, we have Beetlejuice. Mayor Lightfoot announces Chicago will require proof of vaccination to enter bars, restaurants, gyms, theaters, and more. So following the horrible example of de Blasio in New York, this fool also wants people to show proof of vaccination, but of course does not want you to show your driver's license in order to vote because she thinks that certain people are too incompetent to do so. And uh, as the article points out here, here's the kicker. Anyone 16 and older must show ID that matches their vaccine records. But these are the same people who have said providing ID is racist and oppressive. This is the topsy-turvy so-called logic that you get with left-wing thought. And here from Andy No, we see a tweet of a brawl that broke out in a Miami International Airport. And this is just sort of uh, typical and standard for the craziness that we're all going through today. Day and I'll hit play. And so this is America in 2021. Also in related Beetlejuice news, Chicago has seen over 800 homicides since the beginning of 2021. And now during fundraisers, Beetlejuice is finally being booed by the ignorant constituency who voted this idiot into office. Now over to Zero Hedge, Special Prosecutor, Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox lied to the public in the Juicy Smolier case, which I think we all knew from the beginning that she's just a political hack and a liar just like Juicy Smolier and everybody who came out and supported his lies. She obviously uh, should be forced to resign and probably should go to jail. But nothing will happen predictably because when you're of the leftist persuasion, there's never any true consequences for any actions whatsoever. Here's another article from the Daily Mail also about the microchips that everyone, I guess, will soon be having implanted into their hands. That is in case they opt against getting Neuralink where they have it plugged straight into their brain. Also from Daily Mail, life expectancy fell two years during the pandemic. Of course, the pandemic still is not over. 2020 data shows Americans can expect to live until 77, a 1.8 year decrease from 2019, with COVID the third biggest cause of death. So those who are for population control are achieving their goals on two counts. They're decreasing overall life expectancy and they are managing to decrease fertility rates. And in very related news we have from Zero Hedge here, Europe certifies crickets, worms, and grasshoppers as edible food amid soaring food prices. And uh, this is exactly what the elite want you to succumb to. They want you to eat bugs and live in tiny little hovels and uh, own nothing and love it. That's the future that they have planned for you as you're plugged into matrix type devices. And then at the end of all of that, they want you to climb into your little suicide pod and get rid of yourself. And that's the end of my hopefully YouTube safe report. If you want to have the second half, it's over on Rumble and BitChute and Brideon. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.